So is keto good for grandma and grandpa? All right, maybe that's a little bit crass, but are there benefits of the ketogenic diet for those that are over, say, 60? Well, the short answer is yes, but I wanna be able to explain it in its entirety. So I've divided this video into four sections, divided into the neurological side, the insulin resistance side, the protein and atrophy side, and then of course the mitochondrial side of things. Now the reason I say the mitochondrial side of things is because the mitochondria is the energy powerhouse within the cell and mitochondrial dysfunction is vastly overlooked when it comes down to just health and aging. So we're gonna talk about this and we're gonna break it all down, but let me first say that people that are over the age of 60 are usually starting from a lower metabolic baseline. What that means is that they're generally a little bit slower metabolism. Their metabolism is a little bit more damaged than say someone that's 20 or 30. So that means that they have more room for improvement. Now it just so happens that the ketogenic diet allows for vast improvement. So we see a giant improvement in people that are over 50, 60, 70 years old that are utilizing the ketogenic diet. But we also have to look at another big thing. Chronological age is just a number. Metabolic age plays a big factor and that's lifestyle factors, environmental factors and all of this. Now, I would even say the ketogenic diet is a positive lifestyle factor that can change someone's metabolic age. Now, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole right now, but we can get there another day. The point is, is that people that are over 50 and 60 years old have some massive benefits. So this video is gonna break them all down. I hope that you share this with your parents, your grandparents, people that are interested in starting keto, but maybe don't think it's for them. Hey, we do have new videos coming out almost every single day, so please hit that red subscribe button, and then go ahead and hit that bell icon. That way you get a notification. Post videos at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time almost every single day. Also, wanna make sure after you watch this video, you check out Butcher Box down below in the description. So right now, if you go to the grocery store and you buy meat, you're gonna end up with grain-fed, lower quality meat. But you can get grass-fed, grass-finished, high omega-3 meat delivered right to your doorstep for less than the cost of getting it at the grocery store. So I have a special link down below in the description. So after you finish watching this video, I highly recommend that you check them out because you're gonna get not only better pricing than you would at the grocery store, but you're gonna get even better pricing because I have a special link with a discount for you. All right, let's go ahead and get right into this. First thing I wanna talk about is the neurodegenerative side of things, okay? So we hear a lot of talk about Alzheimer's and dementia surrounding the ketogenic diet and how it can help there. But let's take a look at what's really happening. Okay, a 2015 study that was published in the journal Alzheimer's Dementia took a look at a particular case study, and it took a look at what happened to a sole individual that went on the ketogenic diet that had Alzheimer's. Okay, he saw tremendous improvement, and people that were uh, around him, people that knew him, said that his sense of humor came back, and he came back to life, so to speak. Now, the reason that this probably happens is a lot of times neurodegenerative diseases are a result of excess glucose over the years triggering insulin resistance, but also impaired glucose metabolism and glucose function in the brain. So if you take a brain that's normally running on glucose and now all of a sudden it can't utilize that glucose very well, it's gonna lose performance, right? But if you've unlocked the ability for your brain to utilize ketones in addition, then if you do lose glucose ability, you still have the ketone ability. So you've preserved a portion of your brain. So that being said, it can be used potentially as a treatment, but also as a way to prevent it. So not only if you have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or dementia in your family and you wanna kind of be aware of it and you wanna be careful and you wanna add this into your regime, sure. But if you already have symptoms, you could potentially modulate some of those. Now, when we look at Parkinson's, of course, another neurodegenerative disease, in fact, the fastest growing neurodegenerative disease, there was a study that was published in the journal Neurology, 2005. Okay, this took a look at five individuals with Parkinson's and it had them go on a ketogenic diet for a month. Okay, and what it found at the end of that one month is that symptoms improved 20 to 80 percent in all of the subjects. Okay, this is pretty remarkable after just a month. Okay, why is this happening? Well, again, it could be the glucose issue. It could be the fact that ketones are allowing more actual beta oxidation to occur within the brain, allowing more blood flow, allowing more actual energy. There's a lot of different variables up there, but we do know that there is a massive improvement. So that's point number one, and it's clear as day that if you're a senior citizen or you're over 60 years old, male or female, this will help. Okay, now let's take a look at insulin resistance. Arguably, insulin resistance is one of the biggest factors of aging, okay? As we get older, we become more and more insulin resistant, which means that glucose builds up and does more damage. We have more reactive oxygen species, more oxidative damage that eventually kills off our cells and hurts us, right? 
So of course, in the first place, the ketogenic diet is going to help out insulin resistance. That's already just a given. Okay, we're reducing our carbohydrate intake, we're increasing our insulin sensitivity because we're not consuming as much, so that alone is going to help. But let's dive a little bit deeper. What if we actually look at resting energy expenditure and how efficient the body is at utilizing energy? Well, the British Medical Journal published a study, and this one was really interesting. It took 162 people, divided them into three groups, okay? A high carb group, a moderate carb group, and a low carb group, okay? And it measured a lot of different things, but it wanted to look at their resting energy expenditure based on if they were insulin sensitive or insulin resistant. Here's what's astounding. Okay, everyone that went on the low carb diet ended up having an improvement in their resting energy expenditure. Okay, there's no denying that. They all burned more calories at rest. But what was really interesting was that the group that started out insulin sensitive increased their resting energy expenditure by 135 calories per day. That's pretty awesome, right? Just by going keto. Okay, but the group that was insulin resistant when they started they ended up having an increase in their resting energy expenditure by 478 calories. 135 versus 478, both a great improvement, I'll take them both. But those that were already metabolically damaged, that had high degrees of insulin resistance, saw that much of an increase in their resting energy expenditure, proving that if you are at a metabolically slow level and you are in metabolic decline, the ketogenic diet can not reverse, I'm careful to use that term, but really cause a course correction that allows your body to utilize energy better, therefore driving up your metabolism as if you were young again. This is really powerful stuff and this is perfect. If you're watching this and you're over the age of 60, this might just be what you needed to push you over the edge. But if you're trying to get mom and dad on it or you're trying to get grandma and grandpa, they need to know this, that they can keep their weight in check a little bit better too, simply by improving their resting energy expenditure. Now I wanna talk about something else that ties in with that. Okay, one of the biggest things that happens when people age is atrophy, okay? The body starts to break down its own muscle tissue, it starts to break down its own tissues in general, and that's not always a good thing. It's, it's a natural process, but if you are under stress and you're getting older and your body's in decline, atrophy is a pretty good indicator that you're sick and that that's occurring, right? Now, the cool thing is the ketogenic diet, and I'll keep this one short, has a very powerful effect at stopping leucine oxidation or blunting it. What that means is it's going to stop proteins in your body from breaking down. You're not gonna catabolize as much. So if you're looking at someone that is 200 pounds with a lot of muscle and they can preserve that muscle well into their 80s, they're gonna probably live a little bit longer. They're gonna have more overall energy. They're gonna have a higher resting energy expenditure. They're probably gonna be an overall healthier person. Whereas someone that is breaking down muscle and is withering away, there's a lot of other things that can, can end up being an issue, right? the fragility of that. You take a fall, you don't have muscle to support yourself. Okay, so many people after they break a hip end up dying a year later because their bodies just kind of decompose at that point. Like it can be very, very difficult. We wanna be very, very careful with just how we treat the overall fragility of our actual musculoskeletal system. Okay, enough on that one. Let's talk about something that I find really, really interesting. Now, a friend of mine over at Oxford University that's doing some work over there, and he's a, he's a student there, and he's a PhD student and a med student. His name's Nick Norwitz. He helped me out with this, so big shout out to him. But mitochondrial dysfunction. This is something that is underrated. Mitochondrial dysfunction is like basically our body losing the ability to process energy. The mitochondria is where we process energy. So you can explain this to your parents or grandparents, or if you're watching yourself, that energy that we consume comes into the cell and it goes into the mitochondria and gets processed for energy. Well, that energy creates its own toxins, if you want to call it that, reactive oxygen species, okay? It creates oxidative stress. Well, that oxidative stress eventually wears on the mitochondria and it weakens the mitochondria. But what's interesting is the mitochondria has its own DNA, okay? It's like a little human inside of our own human bodies. And when it goes through its recycling process, it passes its DNA along. So a damaged mitochondria gives birth to already damaged mitochondria, which gets more damaged and then gives birth to even more damaged mitochondria. And you can do the math. So as someone gets older, the natural half-life, the natural progression, someone's gonna end up with very damaged mitochondria that is not efficient at metabolizing energy. So the cool thing is, is that not only do ketones end up blunting some of the reactive oxygen species indirectly, they increase free uh, radical scavenging abilities, you know, so it can potentially stop this from occurring in the first place or limit it, we can actually preserve some of the mitochondria, but we can also help the mitochondria become healthier. And that's what we're after. And mitochondrial health is something that can get passed down 
through the maternal side. So when we look at uh, Alzheimer's, for instance, we can really get a big idea of this. The point is, is that we can get ourselves healthy and get the mitochondria healthy and kickstart a metabolic process where the mitochondrial DNA is actually getting healthier. So if you have sick DNA, that's giving birth to sick mitochondria and more sick mitochondria. Imagine if you could start reversing that and get healthier mitochondria that starts a chain reaction to get healthier mitochondria, healthier, healthier. So rather than this decline, we could actually reverse that and have an increase in mitochondrial health, which is pretty darn amazing. Now I have an epic study to share with you. So the journal Alzheimer's took a look at 36 healthy, cognitively healthy people, okay? Now, some of these people had a maternal history of Alzheimer's, so someone on their mother's side had Alzheimer's disease, usually represented by something to do with the IVCOX, uh, it's a portion of the electron transport chain. So basically what that means is this is an identified portion of the electron transport chain within the brain that is associated with Alzheimer's. The study wanted to find out, and the overall hypothesis was that if someone had a maternal history of Alzheimer's, they would show a decrease in this IVCOX. They would already have kind of the mitochondrial sort of deficiency, if you want to call it that, that would lead to Alzheimer's. And their hypothesis was correct. It did, which shows that, again, the DNA for a mitochondria can actually get passed on the maternal side. So my point in saying this is that it's a lot more powerful than what we think. Okay, not only can it affect our own DNA and our own mitochondria, but being fat adapted and getting our mitochondrial strong can pass through to our children and our children can be born with either stronger mitochondria or already partially decrepit mitochondria. So what you put in your body now for your grandma and grandpa's sake, your mom and dad's sake, or for your own sake is so important. And additionally, the choices you make when you're young play a big role in your child's development of their mitochondria. Anyway, that's a whole different situation, but I wanted to share it with you. Now, if you wanna see a video where I break down a little bit more of how people over 60 should do the keto diet differently, please comment down below and let me know, because I'll produce the video if people wanna see it, but I think it would be a big hit, but I wanna know from you. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. I appreciate all your input, appreciate your time, and I'll see you in the next video.